Hello everyone, my name is Pino Trogu and I'm the teacher for Introduction to Drawing for Designer. And um, yeah, I'll be a teacher, although I guess we won't meet via Zoom since the class is asynchronous. So this introduction is just to, you know, introduce myself and uh, hopefully I'll see you through some um, maybe special meetings or maybe some office hours or, you know, if you just contact me. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself. I already have an introduction to um, to the class, uh, general introduction already on YouTube. And um, yeah, all the stuff is going to be on YouTube. I mean, all the videos uh, besides I learn. And, um, and there's a little bit longer introduction there to the actual um, philosophy of the class and, and, and what we're, what we're going to do. Okay. So today is a little bit about me and also a little bit about the class, um, but most of the information will be on the syllabus. Um, so I'm just going to tell you that I'm Italian. Um, actually, I'm Sardinian. I come from this little place, well, a little place down there somewhere, um, this island in the middle of the Mediterranean. Um, I like this old map from this old book of maps. So anyway, I, I grew up there and then I ended up going to school for, um, well, actually for uh, high school, I stayed in Sardinia. There was a great high school there. And then I went to Urbino, which is here uh, near Florence. And there I did my undergraduate. And then from there, I went on to uh, Rhode Island School of Design. Um, before I move on though, I'm just gonna show you a book from yeah, my high school actually. So it gives you a little background. Uh, there were two sections. One was woodworking and the other was ceramics. And I did woodworking. Um, everyone, of course, had to do drawing. Um, so this is a catalog from a show that was done at some point of the work uh, from the students, showing some of the labs. Um, and this is the section, the wood section. So yeah, pretty much like in our school, we would do designs, you know, we would draw things and then we would go into the shop and make them. Sometimes they would just be purely, um, you know, shapes and forms, not, the, not necessarily like a, a function, um, but then other times there would be real objects like this um, chess set, for example, made out of wood. Uh, and in here, there are actually there are actually some things I worked on. Um, this was a a system for um, it was kind of like a three D puzzle to fit these shapes um, for children. And this was all done by hand, you know, before computers, of course. And that's the thing with this class too. We're not gonna we're not gonna use computer. We're just gonna use pencil and paper. Um, so. These are some studies on bionics, which is bio-inspired design from natural shapes and natural forms. And then this is looks more complicated than we're gonna do, but it's about sectioning a cube into uh, different parts. Um, that's, that's actually a little closer to it. Anyway, that was my high school. And somewhere here actually is a picture of me. I was about 18 maybe. Uh, we're building these geodesic cells in the middle of the square in, uh, in the town. So um, let's see. Yeah, after that, I, um, well, after the high school, like I said, I, I, I went to Urbino for graphic design. Then I went to uh, Rhode Island School of Design. Um, eventually, I came back to the United States and I taught at um, Virginia Commonwealth University for a while. And uh, then I, we, I made my way to San Francisco where I worked for a, an exhibit design company called the Birdie Group. And I remember at that interview, this was in 1992, I think, um, they did ask me about drawing and they wanted to see, you know, if I could draw or what my drawing skills were. So I remember I had to put together this um, this book, this is just a bunch of Xeroxes of either sketches for publications or maybe notes from a book, um, some actual work. These were sketches for some uh, nature illustrations for a, um, an elementary school reader, actually, about the earth and how the earth rotates around the sun. And, and I guess that's the, the final illustration. Um, 
So yeah, it's uh, it can be you know it can be a good thing to know how to draw, especially now that everybody else knows how to, how to use the computer. So you know, knowing how to use the computer doesn't mean anything, right? But knowing how to draw is actually quite important and can set you apart from um, other people trying to get the same job. This is actually a, a sawhorse table that I designed um, years ago and I still use it. Um, and some details and maybe some sketches. Yeah, actually this was just the information that I needed for all the parts when I went to the uh, lumber yard to get them. Um, or, yeah, some early sketches. What else? Oh, yeah, some technical stuff I did. And even a perspective like that, I guess. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, I'm gonna leave it open so we have something on the screen there. By the way, I like, I don't like looking at myself on the screen, especially if it's big. So that's why I'm using this method. You can still see me, but I'm not so big. Um, yeah, um, at State, I teach, besides the drawing class, I teach the uh, information design class, data visualization, where we make graphs and we visualize um, data statistics. And I've taught also the exhibit design class when we used before the gallery class. And um, yeah, so let me talk a little bit about the class again to, tomorrow. Later tomorrow, I'll have the syllabus up, but um, as I talk about it, I'm gonna show you some drawings from a student from I think about a year ago when we had made some folders to keep all the drawings in. Um, and so the, it's changed now a little bit, the, the, sec, the sequence of drawings, but, um, but this will give you an idea. Okay, so the, yeah, all the sequence and the numbers is gonna be scrambled, but, um, uh, but let, me, let me go over first, um, let's see. Um, yeah, like I said, you're gonna need two, three things at least, okay? And I'm really going bare bones this, this semester. So um, you're gonna need at least two triangles, ideally with uh, markings for inches and, and millimeters, um, but you can all, and then you need a straight edge um, and that will have hopefully or should have the markings so that you can also use triangles that are not marked in combination, okay? And then you're gonna need the pencils. And this is a mechanical pencil that's the ideal for, um, for uh, technical drawings. And then you can have various pencils for, for sketching, okay? And for freehand drawing and um, fairly soft, uh, HB, B, 2B or not to be. Um, so, so that's the minimum. Um, I have a whole video about um, tools. Okay, it's from last semester where I was requiring, um, you know, more tools that had to be bought. And those would still be required if you choose to do a certain set of drawings. So I'm gonna have like slightly less complex drawings, more complex, so you can pick, you can do one or the other. Um, so for the more complex one, you'll need those extra drawings. I mean tools as well, but um, but you can you can also do both if you want. You know if you want to do more work, but um, you don't have to. Okay. Uh, what else? Yeah. So because the class is asynchronous, most of the communication will be via email, via iLearn. Um, I'll have office hours like every teacher, and um, you can write to me. Email is the best, just email me and I'm very fairly quick at getting back to you. Um, there will be feedback in iLearn on your drawings that you'll submit. I'll, I'll give you more details about how to photograph them and, and, and upload them. Um, and I, I'm gonna have TAs too that are gonna help me with everything in the class, including some grading. Um, so, so yeah, I just encourage you to contact me and um, you know, and just, yeah, just touch base um, if you have questions, okay? Um, so the work will be due on Tuesdays, um, I think, we'll try that. Um, so at 10 o'clock um, and we'll be due every week, okay? 
and some weeks there will be one drawing, some weeks there will be two drawings. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so go to YouTube, just just search for my name, uh, Pino Trogo, two words, and it will come up. It's a whole, um, I guess it's a channel, I don't know. But it has uh, playlists, and one of them is the drawing playlist. Okay, some stuff is not, we won't do, but you know, just start getting, um, getting used to just going there and, and look for the videos there. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I want to make this. I'm going to try to make this short. So I'm just going to go through these drawings, and I won't say too much about them. But you'll get a sense of what we're going to be doing. Okay. So at the beginning, we're going to be doing freehand sketch that is without tools. Um, however, we're still going to have this title block that I uh, discussed earlier. And uh, so we're going to be drawing, yeah, one of the things we're going to be drawing is a uh, milk carton. Well, in this case, it's actually a, a goldfish carton, uh, but that's not for this week, that's later. We're going to be drawing bottles in oblique views and how they're structured, how they're built. Uh, this will actually be at the end an optional drawing, which is a wood black, uh, wooden leather, um, which is kind of like a, a, a uh, like a rubber stamp, but it's used, um, you know, it's kind of like metal, the metal leathers that you can use in uh, leather press, by the way, this is the tool that they use in uh, the composing stick to set your, your letters in, um, let's see, I forget how to use it. Yeah, like that. Um, and then instead of having metal, right, which these letters are, um, okay. Uh, you would have wooden letters, bigger ones, so they wouldn't be so heavy. Um, and that's what, and unfortunately, if we were at school, you would get one of these blocks to draw, but we're not at school. So some people maybe have these because, you know, sometimes you buy them at flea markets. Um, we're going to do some extra objects, um, but they're going to be a little bit simpler, although you'll have a choice to do one that's more complex. Um, this would require a compass. This is the... Uh, uh, geometric shapes, and I'm actually saying you should get a compass, but if you can't, well, too bad. Um, you won't do these drawings. If you do, you can do these drawings in addition to the others. Um, so uh, it's such a basic tool that you probably all should have one from middle school, but I had uh, trouble last semester getting people to get compasses, and definitely don't get one from from Safeway or Walgreens. Um, this is gonna be one of those drawings that's gonna be op not optional, but like you can pick to do this instead of doing a simpler one. And it's a clothespin. Uh, and then we're gonna do a project with the cube and I'll have uh, one, me one method that will be actually a simpler grid, a two by two, yeah, two by two grid as opposed to four by four grid. So you'll have a the path for those who wants to do a simpler version and one for those who want to do a more complex version where you, um, and I'm not gonna go away from the video, from the camera now, but we're gonna split this cube into two parts um, according to a certain progression. We're gonna find the inside of the cube, uh, find the parts. So for example, for this, um, uh, where is the little guy? This is actually gonna be one of the simpler ones. So if we cut the cube in a certain way, we need to figure out how, what are these parts to make it possible then to fill in correctly. Okay, and this is that inside part. And then we're gonna draw the cube using isometric drawing. This is actually now technical. This everybody will have to do. Again, you can pick the simpler section. So the drawing would be simpler, fewer lines. Um, because the grid will be simpler, so the section will be simpler. Um, this was freehand, but it's not going to be tools. And then we're going to start perspective, okay? And in perspective, we're going to start with one point. Um, perspective, just one vanishing point. This is again a view of the cube, pretending it's a 
kind of a house. Uh, we're going to do a little tutorial on how to do two point. Again, I'll have one that's even simpler than this for those who want to go that way. And the same thing for this. This is actually a two point perspective of the two cubes. Um, again, with the more complex section, depending on which one you pick, you'll do either somewhat complex like this or less. Uh, and then at the end, there's going to be an option to do a colored version of that, um, of that last scene. Uh, and then these are just all the other sketches, which you should, you should hold on to, right? These are nice. And unfortunately, well, some students did not pick up their work. I'm really going to contact them all actually and ask them, well, when we go back to if they want to come back and pick them up. But these are some of the sketches. So don't don't treat each sheet. Don't be stingy. You know, paper is cheap in America. Uh, there are lots of forests and we're close to Canada. So we can buy cheap paper from, from them. Um, okay. So just do lots of sketches, lots of sketches. And then, you know, you do have to submit one for grade, but um, oh, this is actually a nice pattern that it's a template to figure out again the inside of this particular section for this cube. Um, okay, so shade drew a lot of a lot of balls. These are these are nice. Uh, and then tracing paper. Yeah, I forgot to mention, you really should get a pad of tracing paper because it's super, super useful, okay? And I'm gonna quickly show what those pads are, uh, even though I have, again, a whole, a whole tools video, okay? So a pad of tracing paper, you can use eight and a half or nine by 11 or nine by 12. These pads usually come in nine by 12. So that's kind of the default. So a pad of tracing paper, to be uh, really to work, you know, easily and to see things through, um, so that you can sketch something and then you can maybe double check to see if you like it. Okay, it's like opacity in, in Photoshop. Very, 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 very useful. Um, it's much more valuable than Photoshop pound for pound <laughs> um, and it's fast too. So Bristol board is actually um, a little, um, well, not a little, quite a bit stiffer, okay? So that's what you need to do your good drawings. Um, is a, a little drawing that I did of a um, beehive cell from the honeybees. Um, that's inside, they're actually shaped like that. They're not flat. Uh, the hexagon is not flat. And then you need a uh, sketching paper, okay? This is another pad of sketching paper. So, so that's why tracing paper is great. These were also trial and error patterns that she figured out to do the cube in perspective, okay? More sketches of the cube in perspective. Right, so tracing paper is your friend, like your really, really dear friend. Uh, more color exercises towards the end. And there should be another perspective. Yeah, so you can see this person wasn't satisfied with just doing one drawing. Okay, that's the drawing I'm gonna turn in. I'm not gonna waste any more paper. No, she did a lot, which was great. Um, this is the perspective construction of that item that we saw earlier, okay? And I'm gonna be strict this semester about whenever we have one of these drawings. Um, and again, you'll have a sim simpler version of this. You must submit this construction too because people have like traced, you know, what's an I learn and that's not good. I'm also going to be asking you to sign a pledge that you're not going to, um, let's just say the word cheat or, you know, cut corners in such a way that's it's really not fair and it's you're not gonna learn anything, right? Um, so this would be the uh, 
perspective construction for the two cubes, another perspective. And I think that's it. So I'm going to end there. And I'm going to see you, I guess, mostly on YouTube. It's weird, but I hope to see you all, you know, hopefully through some Zoom meetings that maybe we set up. Um, maybe you come to these open meetings that I'll have, which will be like an hour or two every week. I'll just leave it on and people want to check in, they can check in, okay? So um, I will have the uh, assignments on iLearn, uh, the first three assignments, and also the syllabus sometime um, today, I guess. It's already today, <laughs> um, which is the 25th of January, 2020. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.